Okay, so we have some ramp, but we're going to have to be very quick to deal with this Minsk and Boo. And I'm not sure if our current hand can actually handle the speed of Minsk and Boo. We don't have any removal for it, apart from the Terra Sunder. But by that point, is that going to be too late? I think we're going to mulligan this. Um, wow, okay. This hand is significantly better. Absolutely amazing power level here. Three removal spells, one of which can just absolutely annihilate the Minsk. And yeah, let's cut down this old druid. Stops them ramping out to four mana next turn. Yeah, Minsk and Boo makes a hamster every turn. They can sacrifice it to draw cards deal damage. They can make the hamster bigger. It's pretty crazy, and it's a plus one, plus one counter synergy deck as well. Also will help us regain a bit of life. Death Sprout on top. We are looking absolutely fine here. We have the mana to cast it. Kill stuff, ramp, and if we do get to successfully cast it, the following turn we can follow up with the Casualties of War, which should pretty much assure our victory at that point. Lelia, she's going to come down. Attacking is a 4-4 because of the branching evolution. So I, I'm i glad the last march of the last Ents is gone because that is just ridiculously good. And so again, a life here. I think we'll try and use Death Sprout. They're good up Hexproof. And luckily they do not. So we get through. That lady would have been quite the problem to deal with. Because she would have been a... 6-6 six, six in the next turn. That essentially um, was triple her power. Okay, so now we have... Their shields are completely down. And we should be able to just finish them off. That's a 7-7. Seven, seven, just uh, chilling out there. They can see the next card is Invoked Despair. They are not going to be happy. Planeswalker, land, enchantment, and creature. This is what you call hideous take care of their mountain because that's their fewest resource they have of that color and total annihilation casualties award not very really honorable victory but a victory nonetheless against a very powerful planeswalk playing us first with the ooze eve progenitor ooze and my god i really think golgari is up there for some of my favorite uh cards so they've already got three permanents out on turn one, which is not very... Uh... It's not very really good for the morale, I have to say. So what do we have here? Whenever you cast an L spell, pay green draw a card. That's a good card. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> Apart from that, the hand doesn't look so great, does it? Oh, they got a Garlic Greetus. Come on. That was a good top deck from them. Oh, well, we have loads of removal. We should be fine. Eve. So, Eve, let me just read this again. Isn't legendary if it's a token? I think it's got Storm. That is... Weird. Copy for each spell cast before it. You may choose new targets. But does this work? Okay, so they're going to get multiple Eves. That's kind of scary. That's a scary thing. Let's kill the Garlic Greeters, because that is um, incredibly good with just any creatures in their hand. The Elseworlds Nightmare should be able to get rid of the Great Henge as well, which is something that I'm a bit concerned about. And then if the Growing Rites flips, we're in a bit of trouble here. Allosaurus Shepherd. Nothing that taps for green. Paradox Engine? What the f... Paradox Engine? That is not something I was expecting to see. So the core set of Crufix works super well here with the Mortality Spear. So if we play a land next turn, we gain a life, and then we can play this for two mana, so that's going to be great. We also have the Broken Bond, which is, oh, fantastic as well. They missed out on a land, which is not good for them. We have such an advantage in this game. We... Do we just... I think we just go for the Voring Clep so we can get some extra lands, though. Because we missed one on top, you see. 
Uh, we can get for a couple of these. Always forget that these gates are forests as well. And you know, we'll play the dual land here. We might as well attack. They cannot kill it, I don't think, unless they've got like a giant growth in hand. Okay. So they do go for a land here. They can go for the Eve. So they're going to go for the blob. Power and toughness is equal to the number of types in the graveyard. So zero types. Create an ooze. So we're going to want to kill the blob, aren't we? This Itlamot now also taps for five. So let's think this through. Play the land in line. We want to kill this blob. And we could kill the ley line, but is that a problem? Hmm, I'm a bit worried. Although they have the great henge in their hands, so I think I'd rather kill that. Yeah, I'd rather save that for the henge, because I think we're in a bit of trouble. Otherwise, swing with those. Hmm, they still have it really good here, because next turn they can tap it at the mock. For four. So they get to play the Eve. And, um... Oh, there's a lot of different paths they can take, to be honest. Land is actually weirdly good for them. We're going to go for the Henge first. But they've already tapped the, uh, the mock. But they know we have the Broken Bond in hand. So it, uh, that was a curious... That was a curious one, I have to say. Um, yeah, we're just going to kill the Henge, right? Otherwise, we just we're just going to die to that. Because they're just going to be able to draw so many cards. Uh, put a land. We'll put the swamp into play. Yeah, we'll just keep setting up our field here. I think we have them, to be honest. I mean, eventually they can pay 8 to put counters on all their creatures, but again, I'm not too bothered about that. Are they roping me here? Okay, so when we play Glissa, we get to draw the Liliana, so that's also nice. So we basically have our own mini henge, because the Guardian gives us cards when creatures comes in, and of course it gives us life when lands come in. And I think I'm going to use the minus two because every creature we reduce from their side of the field is going to be nice because it reduces the Itlamok tap um, amount. Ah, nobody knows Dominaria shadows like me. So we'll make them sack a creature. So it's probably going to lose a zero one. I can't imagine them sacking anything else. But also the Allosaurus Shepherd can pay six to make <laughs> all of their creatures fire fives until another space? turn. So we're not going to attack. Because I don't want to lose the Liniana necessarily. Let's see what they do. Mix Lotus. So that's eventually going to tap for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. They're going to get two Eves or Aves. Who knows? Mm, this is looking a bit scary now, to be honest. Let's play that land. Invoke Despair. How can we draw that? Don't think we can. Are we in trouble? Maybe we are. Drop it. So they're gonna make all the creatures. Oh, each elf. Sorry. Okay, if it's just each elf, I think we'll flip the Vorinclex. See what we get. <laughs> we get. <laughs> we get some little dudes, but we do draw two cards, so I can't really complain about that. Including the Elders Reborn and Hero Intervention. Wow. I mean, to be honest, can't really complain. We're going to hold off. I doubt we're just going to die to an Alpha Strike. This Eve can get pretty big and this can tap to our loads of mana. Ten. <clears throat> I 
But remember this, guys. No matter how big their creatures are, Glissa will be able to kill any of them before they even lay a finger on her. So they're somehow going to have to get through this. The only way they can get through this is if they, they themselves have first strike or an indestructible card. Um, but yeah, with Glissa on the field, I'm really not that bothered. And they know it because they're not attacking. So sadly, our Liliana's not really getting to do much. But seven counters on any number of creatures. Let's just make the Corsa huge, right? Seven counters on the Corsa. That's the biggest Corsa I've seen in a long time. Um, Elves Reborn. So they're going to get rid of the Elvish Visionary, I think. It's either that or the Ooze, because... The vision they can make bigger. Okay, they go for that. We'll tick this up, discarding this forest. I'm tired of your secrets. So we could actually attack here, but they will be able to double block. Oh no, they'd need to block with four things, wouldn't they? Well, let's see what we do. We've got the indestructible. Let's see. Be interesting to get a, at least one trigger off. Because we can then re-trigger the Grand Evolution if we really wanted to again. But then, to be honest, that is going to get to the ultimate stage next turn, so maybe not. They're going to sacrifice a news. Fine by me. Yeah, pass to them. Again, no trample. No trample means I'm really not that bothered. As if they have that much mana though. That is, that is a lot of mana. All going in at Liliana. I think, yeah... So just to quickly review that final attack there, the 911 itself would be able to kill the Eve and the rest we could just chomp or let it through. We could even let her die, she'll come back eventually. But yeah, we got pretty lucky though. If we hadn't gotten rid of this support um, and this blob, I think we would have been in a lot of trouble. But this just goes to show how powerful this ley line is. Even without a single um, like mana dork, um, yeah, always respect this card, especially on turn zero. Crazy. If you are liking this video, why don't you leave me a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. If you would like to get custom videos, why not check out my donation tiers in the description box. You can join YouTube membership. You can join Ko-fi or even Patreon. Uh, just take a look and it really helps the channel. So on to the next video. We get to go first with an absolutely abysmal hand. It's a shame because if we did have a forest, this would have been close, very close to being good. Uh, this one is considerably better. Okay, so we've got the untapped duel on turn one. We've got the sword of forge and frontier turn two. I mean, that's pretty good, right? Let's just pray we can actually uh, keep our things on field here. They're probably going to be more focused on ramping, but they probably have a few pieces of removal here and there. Okay, let's equip. They cannot block because we've got pro red and green, which is incredible because that is the color of their deck. So the more lands we get here, the merrier land. Wonderful. And I think we're just going to use painful bond in their end step. They do have one, two, three. They're going to have four mana here, which means they can go for uh, any of the. Uh, the land searches, they get two lands. There's three or four of those now, which is kind of insane, which means for the following turn, they'll get a um, an Atali. Okay, so they're going to go for the Sunball Sage. So we want to kill this 100%. Draw some cards. So if we can play the Casualties, I think we are golden. Casualties will just win us the game. And this video might as well have Casualties as the Commander, which is hilarious. <laughs> I think that's where we're going, isn't it, guys? Land creature. 
Or do they quit? And I have no mercy because they're playing Atali, which is one of the strongest cards ever made. I think it's definitely one of the strongest cards ever made. No doubt about that. Um, okay, let's go for the axe as well. So we can draw even more cards from our deck. And swing in. The fact they can't block this is ludicrous, but let's be honest, I don't think it would block either way. So we're going to get <laughs> three cards, basically. Absolutely ludicrous. Cultivate and an Elspeth's Nightmare. Well, I'm not sure they can really do much else, can they, guys? Let's get rid of the Legion Caryatid, unless they have Hexproof, in which case the Nightmare will not go off. Vintage Restoration. Okay. We've got no permanence to return, so this regrowth was sadly null and void. Cultivate would have been okay, but again, I'd rather just do things a bit more proactively. We are absolutely tickling their reinforcements. Not much they can do, is there? Might as well play the Shadow Spear, yeah. Absolutely only Italian player there. No mercy, and GG's. Don't go first with Thalia, but we have a very good and so let's keep this with glissa out we can also cast the mox hammer which gives us mana for the cut down but we'd probably be using this before anyway mulligan to six never a good sign is it mulling is one of the riskiest things you can do but sometimes you have to otherwise you just lose the game anyway right okay gilded goose turn one turn two glissa if we draw something that can give Hexproof for one green, then that would be good. Abyssin's Pilgrim. Okay, we'll go for the Glisser. And just like I said in the beginning, we will cut down the Abyssin's Pilgrim as well, because that's the difference between them casting the Thalia and not casting the Thalia. And that is quite a big swing. I mean, we got Glisser turn two. So we're going to lose her now, but actually, our tackle block. So we still have the Mox Amber to tap. So I think we'll just kill this because it means we can get some card advantage back, which I'm very happy with. OK, so there's the Hexproof we were talking about earlier, but now it's probably a little bit too late. Although we can use it with the sh protect the shielded, maybe we get the shielded out. I think we're in an absolutely fantastic position. Great Hall of the Citadel. Interesting. So they're going to make a one-one blocker. That's actually that's actually a really really good blocker. But sadly, the shielded is just going to deal with the Arch Angel because it, she says non-token gets sacked. Yep, yeah, I feel a bit mean here to be honest. And they're already going for the block. So, I mean, they could have a board wipe, right? And they've got a board wipe. They get some really fantastic value here. A rare and a mythic. But they're going to go for the Thalia. Okay. Thalia also has first strike to touch, which is interesting. because she's a, she's a goody goody and we're evil. So we would actually trade. They've got three cards in the graveyard. Damn, just too much advantage, I suppose. I yeah, I, I can see it, right? We we just we just keep drawing cards. We've got four cards in hand, and they have one. Damn it. Yeah, I feel bad because I was intrigued to see where that was going to go. To be honest, man, this deck keeps giving me these cool cards, but is it going to be enough to stop a Jetmere build? Jetmere build normally follows curve. One, two, three, four. Creature, 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 creature. They probably win by turn four, right? That's the way it works, because it's a baby crater hoof. Can we survive with these? I don't think we can. This is more interesting. Okay. Okay, so we go for the elves next turn. So we want to build up all the black mana we can for the Invoke Despair. Hopefully in the interim we get something else we can do, though. Okay, so still no creatures. I mean, we're very lucky. Very lucky. So we've got one, two, three, four mana next turn. We can have the Glisser. And then as long as we have the elf up the following turn, Invoke Despair can get rid of Creature and Enchantment. 
Scoot Swarm, yikes. Okay, we gotta deal with that. We just have to kill a Scoot, Scoot, Scoot Swarm is a one-man army. Or a one-bug army, should I say. You've all seen it before. It broke the game. It, I think this legitimately broke the game before. Because it was just so so many Scooties. Go for the Glissa. I, I do wonder if they have a board wipe. Because it's, why are they not playing any other creatures? Entirely legitimate strategy. I always say in my deck text with the Go Word strategies... Always have a board wipe just in case, because you're never, you're not always going to be on top. It's not a guarantee. Now, what on earth is going to happen here? It's not going to be Wandering Emperor, is it? It's the Fairy's Protection. How bizarre! To Fairy's Protection on an attack that wouldn't have been lethal. That's definitely not in my top ten cool moves. Uh, well, I guess we have our own to Fairy's Protection in the Yanti Scale Shield. This is legitimately very similar, and it's a real shame that it's not a real card. Playing that unkicked means they don't get any creatures. That would have been two two twos with Vigilance, and it would have also tapped for two mana each. Very unlucky here. <clears throat> Broken Bond on top, absolutely brutal. I really can't see them lasting much longer here. Uh, we could just destroy enchantment. Or just draw a card. I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to be greedy. We could broken bond either of these here, to be honest. And um, I think... I think we shall. I think we shall. Let's get rid of the mana source here. Goodness gracious, we are kicking butt today. Doing pretty damn fine. They could easily drop a land into Farewell, wipe out our field. Will they do that? Any creature they play is not safe. We have so much removal. Ginny Fey. So they get priority, so they can cast another spell here before we can kill it. Take him out. Damn. It's a, it's it's proven to be very difficult to actually get long games with this video, guys. So I do apologise, but... Yeah, good luck trying to get your own glisses and sagas to trigger because the deck is a bit too strong, I think, that you can't do the fun stuff you want to do. That is the strange downside of hyper-efficiency sometimes. You try and do a fun thing, but you've got so much removal to deal with the upper echelons like Atraxa and Atali that opponents rightfully quit the game early. And um, it's just one of those weird dilemmas in the game. Um, whereas in four-player more casual formats even if you're owning someone player three and player four could just take you out equally as easily so there's always a chance to come back and that is why 1v1 is so hard because it's just like a pendulum that swings back and forth and sometimes the pendulum swings so hard you can't get back in the game so yeah that is the way it is sometimes Welcome to another deck tech. Today we're looking at Glitter Sun Slayer. This is one that I um, I think is pretty cool. You get a lot of value from this card. It is essentially a creature with a built-in Phyrexian Arena, as long as you can hit them each turn, which should be fairly easy because nobody wants to block a First Strike Death Toucher. If you don't know how First Strike and Death Touch works, well, it pretty much kills most blockers that get in the way. Even if they're a 10-10, this will hit them for first strike damage and any amount of damage from death touch will kill it. So one, even if this was a 1-3 first strike death touch, it would still kill a 10-10. If you give this trample, then it gets even more interesting because then only one point of damage can be allocated to the blocker and the rest can go over the top. So if you make Glycer a 10-10 first strike death touch trample and they have a 1-1 one, one blocker, You'll do one to the blocker and then nine to them. So it's pretty crazy. The main gist of this deck is you want to use it with sagas. Because the downside of sagas is they eventually go away, right? So the Elders Reborn gets one, two, three counters and it goes away. But with Glisser out, you can actually remove three counters from a permanent every time she hits. Which means you're going to get extra usage out of your sagas. So Elders Reborn is one example of one that's fantastically good. Discards. Makes them sack something, makes you revive something. If you can do that over and over again, we're looking pretty damn good. 
And then you have to start thinking about stuff which is sagas on the backside. So the new Praetors, when these flip, become these mega sagas. And it's a lot of time and mana investment. But if you can do this over and over again, you're going to be in really good stead. It's a bit win more, to be perfectly honest. But it's fun to try and pull off as a little bit of a challenge. Warren Collects as well is really nice if you can just keep doing these triggers over and over again. You have to be a bit careful because the saga uh, on this side says mill 10 cards. So you might not want to do that too much, but it's going to be fun to see what you get. There's another couple of nifty interactions the deck has, which uh, you have to kind of think a little bit laterally with. Maze Mind Tome puts counters on manually, but if you do, you get to scry one or draw a card, and at the end you gain four life. But if you keep taking the counters off with Glissa, then abilities like this actually can last forever. It's a really powerful card, really cool little ability. And the other one, of course, is the One Ring. You can put as many counters as you want on this, and you'll lose life on your upkeep, but eventually Glissa will allow you to take three counters off, and you can reset the time on the One Ring. So... Interestingly, she has power to resist the ring. I don't know what that means for the Lord of the Rings lore, but there you have it. So that is the outline of the deck. Sagas and counters that are detrimental to the player. The core of the deck is just a really solid Golgari ramp and removal shell. You can see all these one drops that tap for one mana. Halfling, Gilded Goose, Llanowar Elves. They're just... Just really powerful ways to get Glister out on turn two, which is going to be ridiculous. The Dark Ritual as well is just so... It's one of the best cards in the format. You can get out like a Warren Clex turn three, which is pretty ludicrous. Or any of... The, you can get the One Ring out on turn two if you really want to, which would be kind of crazy. Turn two Binding is the meanest something, I think. Killing something and ramping even more is just silly. But if you do enjoy the deck list, it will be available for you to download in the description box. It'll take you to a Moxfield link and you can uh, upload it to Arena and give it a yourself. Tell me what you think. If you would like to support the channel because you've had a goddamn good time, then you can press the like and the subscribe button, which not only really helps me, it helps me get bigger, more popular, which means I get more views, which is great for the channel. And if you'd like to support me, you can do by becoming a channel member. You can become a Patreon member or a Kofi member. Each of those have their own benefits. Uh, check that out in the description box as well. So I hope you've enjoyed today's Glissa Sunslay video. And why not join me for another video? Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead. You know you want to.